Um, so we're, imagine, uh, as we talked about earlier, Alice and Bob. Um, and so both Alice and Bob, uh, at this point, though we expect this to change in a couple of weeks, have the, the Google Apple Exposure Notification app that they've downloaded. Uh, we'll quickly walk through our onboarding. There's a simple uh, terms of use uh, and an explanation to the user about the protocol, uh, explaining the, the, how it functions, uh, its privacy preserving nature, and asking the user to enable exposure notifications. Uh, this enables that OS level uh, uh, exchange of, of um, UUIDs that's essential to the protocol working. Um, so we click enable. Um, you'll notice here, uh, and this is somewhat, this is interesting to highlight, um, apologies, it's, it's so live, I'm getting texts, um, that it says, I'm getting a, a note here because you're only allowed to have one application run at a time. So uh, by me having two applications, you have the ability to toggle between the two. So if you live in North Dakota and South Dakota and you're traveling back and forth, you can have both applications, but you can only have one running at a time. And so I'm going to enable this application uh, to, uh, uh, to be my primary one uh, and distribute exposure notifications. Now, uh, and either Alice or Bob, or both Alice and Bob in this case, would have walked through that onboarding flow. Now, Bob has been diagnosed as COVID-19 positive. So Bob would go into the dot, dot, dot section on the lower right and hit report a positive test result. This takes him to a COVID-19 positive flow or an Apple and Google's parlance, an affected user flow. So here, the Bob is gonna enter a code that's been transferred to him by a phone or email or letter uh, with a COVID-19 positive code, a test corresponding to a COVID-19 positive test result. He enters that code hits next, and then it understands and consents to share his COVID-19 positive keys to the user. Uh, this takes a, a, a second um, because this is actually, on, uh, actually submitting those keys now, which, which is uh, um, uh, 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 to the server and getting confirmation that that's been successful. Now, let's imagine that Alice, uh, uh, Bob has submitted his keys, uh, Alice's phone has pulled those keys down uh, and now Alice is going to have uh, an exposure notification uh, with, with her phone comparing Bob's UUIDs to the ones that she's collected. So if we go here, uh, I'm gonna quickly go into our EM debug mode. This is, a, this is our, uh, our dev build and simulate an exposure. Now we see that on the 17th um, in Alice's exposure history, there's been a possible exposure. It highlights some high level features of the exposures that, that Alice had on that day, a bit about the distance, a bit about the duration, a really important concept for um, what, uh, how we understand uh, COVID uh, exposures. Exposures tend to often vary based upon the duration of time two individuals ha have interacted with one another. Now, importantly, it says, what should I do next? This what should I do next button uh, is where we kick into that customized health authority flow. In this case, uh, we're, uh, as we're right um, re uh, MIT spin out, we imagine the Boston Public Health Commission uh, recommending that a user has had a po COVID-19 positive, uh, uh, ex uh, an exposure with a COVID-19 positive individual to take a self-assessment. This self-assessment I'm really excited about because it's our first truly modular um, uh, component it can be added to exposed users like Alice. It can be uh, part of uh, the, the flow for COVID-19 positive individuals like Bob, or it could be something the user takes uh, each day uh, as a way to keep track and understand um, their symptomology in the event they do ultimately end up COVID-19 positive. Uh, this can be also transmitted between apps, between our Bluetooth application or our GPS application. So this self-assessment, uh, importantly, uh, this is an implementation of the standard CDC questionnaire uh, with a number of um, questions, but importantly, they're not simply questions. They also encourage at the end of that questionnaire, uh, the user to actually take a next step. So uh, the health authority can, can tune and customize these self-assessments uh, and these recommendations at the end uh, to help uh, deal with the worried well, who might be concerned but, uh, but shouldn't actually see a health authority, uh, it could reference them to call 911. Uh, in this case, uh, because there's a couple more serious conditions, uh, the recommendation is to notify a caregiver um, uh, insofar as uh, 
uh, insofar as the person's elderly. After that, the user can opt to uh, freely consent uh, to give that published self-assessment data back to the community, uh, which we intend to use uh, and potentially display via heat maps or, or other tools or, or even just share with health authorities. Uh, and that's it.